Good morning. Welcome to Grace for today. Blessings, everybody. God bless you. May his face shine upon you. And may he give you peace. That's what we need. We all need peace. You may say, Sister Edna, I got peace. You got it, but you have it only because he gives it. He brings peace to our lives, to our minds, to our homes. He is the prince of peace. That's who he is. Well, that's awful. That's who he is. Oh, yeah, here we go. All right. So God bless everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. And let's see. We're live. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Uh, and thank you for sharing when you come on. Hey, y'all. I'm going to give you a few moments while I clean my glasses so I can see. And um, blessings to everybody. I hope that some of you were able to join. I haven't been able to check yet. hope that you were able to join us yesterday at um, the McLean Church of God in Christ for their Women's Day service. And we talked about JL. Hope you had a chance to join me for Sunday school yesterday morning as well. If you didn't, get a chance. Go back and catch the replay. I believe that uh, the word of the Lord will bless you. Amen. Hey, Felicia. Glad to. I saw you on. I did. I did. I um. So thank you all for joining. And thank you for those of you that shared. I can see. All right. So God bless everybody. We are grateful. Good morning, everybody. All right. Woo, hallelujah. Praise God. Mm, the Lord is good. Let's get started. So if you didn't get a chance to join us, I, I haven't uploaded everything to YouTube yet, but I will. Y'all bear with me. And uh, so uh, let's get started. So today uh, we're looking at, good morning, Pastor Brent. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come to the McLean Church of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord into Lady Darlene. Uh, hey, Mother Langston. God bless you. Y'all, let's get started. I want to go back just a wee bit to, um, I want to go back just a little bit to verse 13 and start there and move forward, if y'all don't mind. We're talking about the whole armor of God. Good morning, Tracy Green Brown. Good morning. Hey, Sister Brandy Rogers. Hey, y'all. And um, so when we think about putting on the whole armor. I want us to be clear that as people of God, it is our attire. It's our attire. And he says in verse 13, um, let's read the New American Standard Bible. Let's read that. It says, wherefore, take, unto, take up the full armor of God, the full armor of God, that you will be able to resist in the evil day. Which means, if we don't have on the full armor of God, you will not be able to resist. I know sometimes we feel like, you know, we can do everything on our own. You feel strong. Beloved, it's not a feeling. We don't go by feelings. Feelings will change. They will lie to you. We don't live by that. What we do live by is our confidence in the word of God. Our confidence in the word. Exactly. Sister Cassie, that's good. It's our work uniform. Mm. Amen. Amen. All right. I hear you, Pastor Brent. Go and preach that. And um, here, we have we are able to resist in the evil day. Who are we resi we're resisting? We're resisting the enemy. We are resisting the enemy, all the plots, the ploys, and the things that he throws our way because we are standing on the word of God. The word of God stands forever. The word of God it will be the thing that barricades us against, and it, that's a good word, inoculates us against every. Everything that the enemy poses against us, every weapon he poses against us, everything he says will work against us. The word of God says, oh, no, no, it won't because no weapon formed against us. It is formed with you in mind. It is formed to defeat you. It will not work. It will not produce, the, it will not cause that thing to work against you because the word of God in you will push it back. Take unto you, take up the 
full armor of God. We're going to get to one of those at least today, hopefully, so that you will be able to resist in the evil day. And having done everything, you'll be able to stand firm. You've got too many people vacillating, going back and forth, unable to stand firm because they don't have the whole armor. They don't have the word of God. David said, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. The word of God is what's going to keep us stable, firm, resolute. It's the word of God. When the pandemic came, a lot of people saw what was really in their heart. And even now, people see what's really in their heart because some people haven't even returned to church because they really had no passion for the Lord. You, you saw that video where there, I don't know what country it was. I don't think it was the United States. That when the doors of the church opened, the people ran into church because they were glad to get, they really understood that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. They got it. They were glad that the doors were open. They were glad that they could come back to the house of God. They were glad to gather together. Help us to have that fire in our belly, that we want to come back to the house of God, that we, we're glad to see our brothers and our sisters. To, we value that. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. It's like the oil that ran down the beard, even the Aaron's beard, even to the skirts of his garment. There's something about the people of God getting together that should bring us joy. That should bring us joy. We should be glad. We should enjoy each other. We should, there should be, uh, as they say, a special love for the household of faith. We should, we should be glad to be together. Sometimes what the enemy will do is cause you to have all these thoughts about who you don't like, who you don't find pleasure in. Beloved, you're my brother and my sister. Can you act like you're God's favorite daughter? Can you act like you're God's favorite son and put aside all the things the enemy is telling you in your mind? It's that I was about to say it, Elder Ingram. You get your strength from being in the household of faith. We get our strength from being with each other. You ain't got to live with them, but it's our conversation. It is our being together that empowers, that strengthens us. It's our rubbing each uh, with against each other or with each other, among each other, that helps us to be strong in the Lord. I should get something from coming together with you that I don't get from hanging out at my job or with my people who are unsaved, who don't share our like faith. Wherefore, take up the full armor of God so that you'll be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. The word of God will help you to stand firm. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. The word will keep you from sin and sin will keep you from the word. All right, here. Let's move on to verse 14. He says, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Now, where are your loins? I know, I know, I know. Okay, your loins, we're gonna, we're gonna, we, I, I can't demonstrate, but are where your thighs are. It's your thighs. It is the place where you look at runners they need feet that are strong, yes, and legs, but their thighs are where they, they're going to get that, 
that's that agility and their thighs must be they can't be like my thighs flabby and some of our thighs are flabby they need to have strength in their thighs when, when you have muscular thighs you can you can run but their thighs must be our thighs as believers as part of our armor our our uh, work uniform our thighs must be girt about wrapped with truth must be wrapped with truth that truth Mm, I hear that word in my head. That truth will propel you. It will propel you. It will thrust you forward. It will keep you going the right direction. You will have what you need to go further. Your loins, that center section right here that those thighs, it will help you. It will be girt about with truth. Stand therefore with this armor on. Your loins, the part of you that matters significantly with truth, truth. Now another, another portion talks about the belt of truth, but your belt goes around your waist right above your loins. Your, your private area. It's the part of you where you need the truth because it centers you. It centers you. Wrestlers, and some of you have seen them, um, especially when you're doing some of the, the uh, weightlifting. They have on these massive, to me they're massive, these massive belts. The, not like the little belts we wear on our, you know, around our waist. Those Liberty belts we go by at Walmart. These are massive belts. Five, six, seven inches belts. They put them around their waist to center them. Their loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. Your breastplate covers this vital organs, your heart, your lungs. Your, your breastplate of righteousness is the thing that helps and reminds us that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's in not in our own ability, I gotta go. It helps us. It reminds us. That what we do, the part of us that keeps us breathing, living, functioning, is that right relationship with God. That right relationship with God. I got to go. I'm not going to be able to go further. I don't think it's 728. Because I want us to get that. He said, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Truth matters. The truth sanctifies. Having this truth will center you as well. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. We must remember it's not our own righteousness. It's his righteousness. It's his righteousness. Let's put a pin there because tomorrow... Today's Monday. Tomorrow we'll go to verse 15. Let me read verse 14 from the New American Standard Bible. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the... Who's supposed to put it on? You. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Verse 15 we'll pick up tomorrow because that talks about the next part of our armor, our work attire, our living attire, our living attire. We'll start right there because I want us to get this. What are we wearing? Sometimes we act like we can just take off the parts we don't like. We don't want truth. We don't want to wear no righteousness because we want to do other things. But beloved, you need to be right in the Ingram. We need to be fully dressed. Otherwise, we'll topple over. We'll fall over. My mom and them used to say, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. But if you don't stand for holiness and for truth and for right, you will, you will 
fall for the things that are wrong. Let's stand for righteousness. Let's stand for holiness. Let's stand for godliness. Stand, therefore. Stand. Therefore, stand. You can stand. Just make a choice. And then having done all, stand. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Help us, Lord God, to understand and to stand under the truth to stand in truth and to stand with your truth and sanctify us through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Glory to your great name. Help us to believe your truth and to walk in that truth daily. The entrance of your word brings light. Your word is true. Light our path with the truth of your word. We receive it, dear God. We believe that what you say above all else will guide us. Help us to be centered in your word. We thank you for it even now. Bless your people going out and coming in. Order our steps today. Be our healer. Heal our bodies. Heal our minds. Heal us of every negative word spoken and we believed. Help us to not believe the lies of the enemy. Help us to believe what you've spoken about us and over us. We decree and declare that what you say is true. And every other voice is a lie. You will perfect the things that concern us. Draw us closer to you. Father, we thank you even now. We receive these things. Bless our little ones. Bless those who are connected to us. Protect our children as they go about their day. Protect our loved ones as they drive to and fro. Protect them, Lord God. We thank you in advance and thank you for testimonies of your healing power. We receive it done in Jesus' name. So it is. Amen. God bless everybody. Hey, don't forget to, to follow and join, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm so close. We're so close to 150 followers on YouTube. If you have not, would you please go to our YouTube channel? Same name, Grace with a D. Um, would you follow that Grace for today? on YouTube as well. We'd appreciate that. Join us in the morning at 7.15 a. This weekend, don't forget, Saturday, Lord willing, at 10.30 a.m. Central Time, we will have Life Class, L-I-F-E, Live in Faith Every Day. Life Class at 10.30 a.m. Central Time. Join us then for a time a little bit longer than 15 minutes, roughly about 30 to 45 minutes, an hour, sometimes, depending. But join us on Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. Central Time. But until then, join me in the morning at 7.15. Um, and remember this, time spent in the Word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. See y'all in the morning. Peace.